Hey guys, this is Kenjido and welcome to another MakeShot Pro video. Today we're going to be covering how to create this black light effect. And the basic idea behind a black light effect is that pretty much everything that doesn't have the sort of reflective attributes uh, in a black light scene are going to be dark, they're going to be mostly bluish, um, and in some cases, if there's certain sort of fluorescent material involved, you can have different colors uh, appear like they're glowing. And just because in my case, I thought coloring would actually make the picture more interesting, that's what we're doing. But essentially, we're just going to be isolating the parts that we want to have this glowing attribute and leave everything else this sort of dark blue ambience. And if you are having trouble following along because I'm moving too fast, you can use the settings in YouTube that allow you to adjust the playback speed so that you can change it to be slower. So let's get to it. So the first thing we're gonna do is duplicate our original layer just so that we have a copy of the original for other things we're gonna do with it. And this new layer is going to be our new background. And the first thing we wanna do is sort of create that dark blue overlay. What I'd like to do is actually use a gradient map script. Now this script I got from Levy Fiction's uh, WordPress site. I've provided a link in the description. Uh, it's free. And uh, just on a side note, if anybody's looking to try to learn anything about scripting, that is a great uh, resource as well as the PaintShop Pro forums. But essentially what this script does, this gradient map script does, is you can select a gradient as your stroke color and so like in this case uh, I have created already one I think I called it black light and what you'll notice about this particular gradient is I don't I don't just have um, you know black and blue I have like a mix of purple in there because I feel like that that kind of has more of that black light kind of effect and also uh, what, what the gradient map does is instead of having parts that are just like really bright white staying bright white, the, the color that a bright white is going to convert to when we do this gradient map is blue. Because essentially what the gradient map is doing is it's saying this is the color I'm going to assign for the luminance of each pixel in the image. So all the colors that are going to result after running this script are only going to be the colors that fall along this gradient. Now, one thing about this script is it operates on an image as a whole, so um, I don't want that to happen since I want to preserve my background, so I'm going to copy this and then actually paste it as a new image. Then I'm going to select a gradient, my black light gradient. And then I can simply run the script. And then what you'll see now is it applied that gradient to the luminance range of the image. So now I can copy this and paste it back as a new layer in this image. And so now we have our sort of base image to work with. It still doesn't quite have that really dark black light feel, but we'll adjust that later after we add all the lighted elements and then hide this. Now, what follows is essentially just identifying and isolating the parts that we want to have lit up. And this can be done with um, the background eraser or with masking, but ultimately what we want is just a layer that's going to be only the pixels of the things we want lighted. And in my case, that's going to be the glasses, the lips, this earring, uh, or gauge more appropriately, and all of the tattoos on the neck as well as on the head. So for this next phase, just because it's a little bit tedious and time consuming, I'm just going to time lapse the isolation of these different pieces and one thing to consider that um, is going to help in some cases where the pieces that we want um, are being dark is if we were to do perform a negative image on that then what we can see is it's going to be white which is actually the color we want and it's going to stand out so 
I've created a negative image and then just to make the uh, distinction between the light and the dark we can use levels and bring up the darks for example and then whatever technique of isolation we're going to use will be a little bit easier all right so let's speed it up Okay, so now that we have isolated all of the parts that we want glowing, the next thing we want to do is to change what its color representation is going to be. And the first step in doing that is um, to have our lighted layer selected, so I'm calling this fluorescence. And then what we want to do is go to adjust hue and saturation, hue and saturation and lightness, and essentially we're just trying to get rid of any existing color. So we're dropping the saturation all the way down to negative 100. Next, what we want to do is create a new raster layer. And what we're going to be doing is filling it with whatever color it is we want to be applied to all of these bright parts. For me, because I wanted it to be a little bit more interesting, I chose to do a gradient. So. The material I have is I created a gradient, a gradient I called Neon Lights, and what you can see is it just has really bright colors like a bright pink, a yellow, and a green, and it just flows between those three. Uh, and I also have it at an angle because I do want that color change to kind of flow along, you know, the, the, the direction of all the lighted parts on her face. So with that created and that selected, we can just use the flood fill tool and then just fill that whole area. And then what we want to do is change the blend layer of that color to be overlay. So then you can kind of start to see, you know, the effect going on here, but it's affecting the entire, you know, image, but uh, what we'll also notice is that it's not really affecting the lighted parts as much as we probably like. Like a lot of it's still just really white. And so the gradient color will come through better if the, the bright parts aren't so bright. So we can go back to our fluorescence layer and go to adjust brightness and contrast, brightness and contrast, and then just decrease the brightness a little bit so that we get some more of that color kind of coming through in all of our lighted parts. All right, so next we need to blend this into this sort of background blue image because as you can see, it really is kind of affecting it rather than blending in with it, and that's not what we want. So what we're going to do is above our blue background, we're gonna create a new raster layer, and then we're gonna fill it with black. So what this is gonna do is create a very obvious, you know, sort of lighted color and, um, you know, dark sort of background. and. So what we want to do then is create a new sort of merged image of this and paste it as a new layer. So we can say copy merged, and then we can turn all of this stuff off. And then right above our blue layer, we can say paste as a new layer. So then we'll see we've got that combination of things with the color gradient and then we can just change the blend mode of that dark layer to screen. And now we can see it's got that nice bright sort of glowing effect without impacting the background. Now looking at it, I think it looks pretty good so far, but I definitely want to punch some of the color and the intensity a little bit more. So, so the ways we can do that in this case is by applying contrast. So. Now that we have, you know, our lights and our dark kind of combined at this point, I can add a adjustment layer of levels. And then really what we want to do is kind of just like darken things a little bit, and that's going to create a little bit more contrast between, you know, these bright glowing parts and the the dark behind it. And and this isn't this isn't an extreme change. These are just very subtle changes to try to uh, you know, enhance without going too crazy. I also want to bring out the color a little bit more on this sort of glowing layer, so I'm going to adjust levels on there as well. And well, like we saw before, 
when we darken you know this sort of area the lighted layer then that's going to have the effect of bringing some of that color from the gradient more more obviously through so uh, to reset these a little bit you know mostly going to drag this middle slider over to the right to achieve that and then maybe even the bottom one bringing it down bringing it in a little bit and still tucking in the top end just to give it that little bit more of the shine so play with that until the color is about where you want it to be and we're definitely getting there right we can delete some of these extra, these intermediary layers just to clean up our our layer palette a little bit now this next stage is optional but I really felt like it just added a little bit of texture and detail and filled in some of the spaces that were a little plain uh, so we're going to be adding sort of like a glittery effect to the side of her face and the way that we're going to do that is we're going to create a new raster layer and then we're going to select just the regular paintbrush, but one thing that's going to be a little bit new that allows us to get this effect is to bring up the brush variant, variance palette. And the key thing in here is that we want to adjust the position jitter to something like 20. And, and what that's going to have the effect of doing is when I paint now, it's going to kind of scatter all of these dots into different places, right? And note that, that I'm achieving this without using a pen. So there's no pressure sensitivity or anything. If you're just using a regular mouse, you're going to be able to get this same effect. And since I still have my stroke color set to my gradient, we're going to see that gradient also applied in here. Now, one thing though that will also kind of uh, add to the, the slightly glittery effect is if we add some hue jitter. Um, so we can do like a small number here and then we'll see, you can see how instead of it all following the gradient exactly, there's a little bit of a mixture between the brights and the dark. See, so that's even brighter. So now that we have our brush variance settings, um, what I want to do is actually make this very tiny. Like I want my size to be like two. And then what we'll see now is as we draw, it is gonna create sort of these, these specks, right? And we can increase the jitter if we want the, you know, how far those specks reach out to go. So what I'm going to do at this stage is really just kind of generously paint across here. And then we're gonna use a mask to kind of clean all that up and rein it in a little bit. So starting with a really wide jitter, just so that we kind of get this, the fade based on how many dots there are and less a matter of how much painting I'm actually doing. And then what we'll want to do is bring that in a little bit as we paint in more concentrated areas where we want more higher concentration. And then this is how we can get sort of a natural gradient to this effect. All right, so we have our, so we can close the brush variants now at this point. So we have sort of our glittery effect kind of, you know, going on here. But then next what we got to do is with that layer selected, we will do a new image and we'll say show all. And with our mask layer selected, we'll want to swap our brushes to be black and white, or sorry, our colors to be black and white. And once again, using the, the paintbrush, but actually, now I, I realize we do need this still. Um, we want to get rid of the position jitter and the hue variance um, because now we're just wanting to paint regular, no kidding, circles, right? And uh, maybe have a slightly decreased hardness here. And so, as typical with a mask, when you paint black, right, it has the effect of sort of like erasing and then whenever you paint white, you can, you can bring it back. 
So we're gonna speed up once again a little bit just so that um, we don't have to just sit through me uh, going refining this mask. But essentially what you're trying to do is just restrict the, the presence of the glare to the areas where you want it to show on her face. One thing you'll notice is there's a certain point where I didn't kind of like where the glitter was going on the top of her head. It felt a little bit too dense and that was in trying to erase it. It wasn't quite creating the effect I was looking for. Um, so just as simply, you can always create a new raster layer and um, uh, create a new mask as well uh, and do it again. So now we're pretty much at the end of our image. I mean, there's there's definitely things you can do to try to maybe enhance things a little bit more, do a little bit of tweaking. You can always play with contrast or add some vignette to make the image look a little bit more dramatic. One of the things I was experimenting with just for fun was I used the Filter Forge Filter uh, Lomo effect just to kind of give it that final touch and I felt like it added some nice pop. But obviously you don't have to use Filter Forge to get that final effect. And that's basically it. There was a lot of steps that kind of went into this whole approach and this project, but I think the end result um, is pretty convincing and has a pretty cool effect. I hope you learned a lot in terms of the gradient mapping, the use of blend layers, as well as brush variants and masks. Uh, we learned a whole lot in this one. So anyway, that's it for me. As always, if you have any questions or would like to suggest content, feel free to leave a comment. If you'd like to get updates of more content I create, click the subscribe button. And if you'd like to support me and the channel, check out my Patreon page, which is on the link on the screen. And I'll see you guys next time.